<laughs> Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. We are here for the final round here at the Sheffield Regional Championships. Myself, Lil Vaporeon on here, and Barash at Josh, all here for the final round. I think our stream technicalities are all back to normal, so we're ready to go. The players are seated. I'm excited. How are you feeling? Yes, uh, last round of the day. Long day for us, for players, but now mm -hmm. Michele Gavelli is facing Aurelian Lefebvre. Uh, for the fi like, they're both 6 1 at this stage. Uh, so whoever wins this round is definitely like in top, cut. in top card. But the other player um, starting 6-1 has a really high chance to top cut uh, with a 5-2 record. Being just slightly over um, power of 2, uh, uh, like 128 in total, yeah. adds an additional round. But having around 130 players, that means that the chance that you top cut with X2 is higher than usual. I think about three or so should top cut today. At least three. I think I rather think like four, maybe five. I'm not entirely sure. The we have the like one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so the winner secured in top cut, the loser still has a high chance. And I'm really excited. We have featured both players before. We know. Like, I think both of them won on stream. It was Mikel yes, Gavelli against Serkan, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm, I'm for looking forward to see who is coming out as the last winner of our first day. Very true. It'd be nice to see those teams again as well. You know, since we've seen them, they were on when they were, I believe, undefeated players. They've taken one loss, but they've managed to fight it back here to the final round, X and one, and they are playing for their place in top cut in tomorrow's competition. We're not going to wait any longer. We're jumping right into team preview here in Sheffield. And let's have a little look at the teams once again. Michele is bringing the Landorus, that Raichu, Nialigo, Cresselia, Gastrodon and the Charizard, whereas Aurelian is bringing the Cresselia as well, paired up with Salamence, Incineroar, Amoongus, Snorlax and Tapu Koko. Once again, Gastrodon looks uh, in a very decent spot against that team. Uh, we have to see which moves it carries. I think we saw Earth Power and Ice Beam before. Um, so I'm excited to see if there's a clear smog that would help dealing with that Snorlax. If it belly drums up. For example. Uh, but other than that, like Ice Beam against Salamence, Earth Power against Tapu Koko and Incineroar, Gastron once again a really great pick and um, if he takes care of that Amoongus if that shows up then I think Gastron might play a crucial role in that game. On the other side we featured Aurelian just a few rounds ago and um, that Salamence and um, Snorlax, I don't think we have seen Snorlax in the last uh, match we featured Aurelian uh, but let's see if it, if it is featured in this match here. Yes we'll certainly have to have a little look. We saw Snorlax earlier on um, but unfortunately um, we didn't get to see any of Aurelian Snorlax um, action, so hopefully he'll be able to bring it here today. It's not paired up with its classic partner of Mimikyu. Um, it has got the Cresselia instead, but Cresselia, I think, has been the Pokemon um, of this tournament so far. Definitely, uh, because it was so difficult to deal with, and we saw, I think, quite a few Moonlight Cresselias, um, setting up Coal Mine, Icy Wind, very, a lot of crucial moves. Uh, Trick Room as well. Um, but yeah, it's, no, like, uh, it's not a coincidence that we are here in the last round and two Cresselias are facing, are facing each other. Very true, Cresselia, you know, it's going to be in top cut either way. And we're excited to be jumping into this game. Both players are ready. And that Raichu Charizard, that Generation 1 combination is jumping onto the field. Whereas Aurelian is bringing the Cresselia and Snorlax. So straight away, one. yeah, a lot of those Pokemon here. But Snorlax is here straight out the bat as the lead for Aurelian. Ice Field Trick Room coming out. Um, yeah, so for everyone who watched um, Michele early on stream, we saw that this Raichu is a Sawbus variant. So there are no Encore possibilities, which Very usually... True. If you prevent Trick Room from going up, is a way to deal with that small. You just encore it. Exactly, but this is not possible here thanks to that Assault Vest, which prevents any status moves going up from that Raichu. Uh, on the other side, Charizard um, can just start like uh, damaging both these Pokemon. Like a potential player would be faking out that uh, Cresselia and just going for a strong heat wave. Very true, and you know the sun is joining the field here as Charizard has Mega Evolve bringing Drought onto the terrain here, and it's going to be firing off some really high power fire attacks. It's going to be the fake out coming out from the Raichu going into Cresselia, going to stop any kind of um, Trick Room or anything, but it manages to avoid, so it has to take the fake out, but dodges out of the way of the Heat Wave. But Snorlax will have to take it and goes for high horsepower, does connect onto the Raichu, and will oh, wow. nearly pick up the KO, surviving on three hit points there. It's like an invisible focus sash. Yep, one very interesting part about playing Snorlax is that a lot of players they're up for setting up as soon as possible uh, but you, you, you can't underestimate the damage output of a neutral Snorlax we just saw how high horsepower was almost enough to pick up the kill and rage so sometimes not setting up quite uh, like quite yet but going for uh, attacks can pay off uh, missing the KO here but still like switching out Snorlax and then going for an icy win is one play or protecting 
Yep, Snorlax this turn deciding to not go on the offensive, just going to protect up, potentially going to see if Cresselia can maybe get off a Trick Room. Knockoff though being revealed from that Raichu, a move that Snorlax does not ever want to take, because it likes holding oh, wow. on to his and precious the Fairy. the avoid on that Cresselia. Yeah, that is Cresselia so nimble. It just jumped out of the way of that Heat Wave. Fa Manchester fire off an Icy Wind. We'll get the KO on that Raichu. So now Snorlax is safe from any of those knockoffs. That's not a move that Charizard will be packing against it. Um, and now Snorlax is in a position where it can start, you know, keep dealing out some more damage. Yep. So one big threat for that Snorlax is from the field. We talked about how Assault West Raichu will prevent Snorlax from start yeah. sweeping. But on the other side, having knockoff on that Raichu is crucial to knock off that berry. But not happening here. Cresselia avoiding two Heat Waves in a row. Still full health. Aurelian in a great spot. He certainly is, and Michele has now brought in his Cresselia, so we've got both of these Pokemon facing off against each other. Could be some crazy mind games going off here, something with Trick Room. Um, and Aurelian has decided to switch out that Snorlax that has helped him out so far in this game and bringing in the Intimidate King. Not quite in this tournament, second place to Landorus in the rankings at the moment, um, but it has come on and fired off Intimidate against both of Michele's Pokemon. That Cresselia, though, that has just come in is going to help out Charizard, goes for Helping Hand as it goes for the 100% um, accurate Flamethrower in the sun with Helping Hand, but that Incineroar is going to be able to take that. It does about a third damage, though, just showing the amount of power that was coming out of that attack, as it will take a side shock in return. Yeah, I really like that switch from Aurelian. It covers incoming fire attacks. Uh, Flamethrower just makes it so that Cresselia from Aurelian still is in full health, avoiding two heat waves earlier and now not being targeted by any attack. And then Incineroar easily took that Flamethrower. Um, so Aurelian, once again, just plays it down really safely. Um, a lot of great switches there. Um, but yeah, we're going off in the next turn with a Protect and an Icy Wind play. So it looks like Mikila is going to play that Icy Wind play as well. Yeah, he sort of wants to maybe start setting up a little bit of the speed tiers going on here in his favor, protecting his Charizard from taking an Icy Wind in return, which is exactly what Cresselia has gone for, and fires one of himself, so ensuring that both of Aurelian's Pokemon will be taking that Icy Wind drop. Um, not very offensively damaging this turn, you know, just chip damage, but getting those speed drops can be crucial in turns to come. Knockoff coming out from that Incineroar, though, going to do a good amount of damage to Cresselia and gets rid of the Wiki Berry. That could be crucial. Yeah, Incineroar is such a great switch, and it takes care of, like, it can easily tank fire type attacks. Um, and then it's such a great answer to Cresselia. Usually you have that um, Landorus joining the field as soon as possible and then taking care of that. Uh, but no Landorus on the field, and Incineroar is free to threaten down that Charizard with strong fire, like, even though they're assisted, Sun Boosted Flabbits <laughs> is dealing a lot of damage to the Charizard and then knock off such a great move against Cresselia, carrying a lot of those very strong berries, healing up up to 50%. So Vicky Berry is gone, no berry for Cresselia left. And let's see if this Heat Wave connects. It actually does. The Cresselia on Aurelian's side is unable to dodge out of the way of this one and it will take oh, it wow. and get the burn as well to punish it for being so nimble earlier. Cresselia, though, going to go for a Moonlight from Akele's side as well. We saw that being utilized so well earlier on his stream game um, and it's now boosted right back up to full HP as Cresselia on Aurelian's side decides to go once again on the speed offensive as it is, just chipping away at Akele's Pokemon here and getting the speed drop on that Charizard that it failed to get previously due to the Protect. Incineroar, however, goes for knockoff once again. Not going to be as powerful as there is no item to knock off, but it still does a good amount of damage to that moon Moonlit Cresselia. Yeah, uh, exactly. And I don't think Aurelian knew about that um, Moonlight. So it was like, oh, I will just knock off that Cresselia once again, take the t knockout uh, without getting any recall damage. Maybe that recall damage would have been crucial in terms of activating a barrier on that Incineroar if He's one of the very incineroars. Um, but once again, Charizard on the field, not dealing too much pressure against that incineroar and Cresselia. And it looks like even though he had the Moonlight play, um, Michaelis slowly goes down on HP on his Pokemon. Yeah, it's going to just sort of have a little look at where the HP is being whittled down. Sometimes with these games, it's not necessarily about all the firepower you have in the house. It's all about the strategy and how you defensively play and set up your Pokemon to sweep later in the game. And that's exactly what these players are doing at the moment with Icy Wind. Heat Wave comes up once again, connects on both the Pokemon, but not enough to pick up KOs. As Psyshock goes into that Charizard, once again, dealing a little bit of damage. As Knockoff comes into Cresselia, does a huge amount of damage, not enough to pick up the KO, leaving Cresselia to just Moonlight once again. So. Michele and Aurelian, they're both kind of playing these games where they're just whittling away each other and keeping their Pokemon on the field. It's going to be maybe a little bit of a stall, a stall kind of game where they're just trying to keep their Pokemon alive at the present. Yeah, the thing is you don't want to take any uh, early neck holds because that's a free switch in for your opponent. On the same side, you don't want to lose any Pokemon, so it's like a little bit defensive here. Uh, but it, we saw how crucial that knockoff on the Cresselia was because uh, Aurelian's Cresselia still having his berry was easily 
dealing back all the damage. Another point, Moonlight and Sun, of course, uh, healing way more um, health exactly. back than out of Sun. That's why the first Moonlight was way more effective than the second one. Yeah, but it helps out his partner Pokemon. But Mikele switched it up and just brought Landorus onto the field here to fire off and intimidate. Going to take the Psy Shock in place of the Charizard as Knockoff comes out once again. So Aurelian just kind of sticking to what he's doing here at the moment. He's going for the Psy Shock, going for the Knockoff. And so is Mikele's Cresselia just sticking to the same plan and just Moonlighting up. I mean, until he switched in that Landorus, it was kind of a stalemate. Cresselia versus Cresselia and then two Fire-type Pokemon who really couldn't damage each other too much. But now Landorus is on the field. How do you think this is going to change? I mean, I was just just waiting for the Landorus to enter the field. Um, it threatens down the Incineroar, but the Cresselia on both sides are like really in a good spot. Let's see if that Rock Side actually picks I mean, up the knockout. Flinches here. could be the way here. Picks up the knockoff. Um, knock. Um, knock out. <laughs> it's a long day, people. Um, on the Incineroar, which is now returned to Aurelian, and it's going to be an icy wind. It's going to connect on both Michele's Pokemon. Landorus, of course, not going to appreciate this. We've seen how much damage Icy Wind can do to this Pokemon, even though it really isn't a very powerful move in terms of its damage output. And once again, speed's being dropped on both these Cresselias. They're just sort of casually firing off these Icy Winds now. <laughs> it, you know, it's just a bit like, oh, hello, here's an Icy Wind. I'll take one too. I'll fire off another one in a moment. Um, but the one thing you have to note as well, that Cresselia is burnt and it's whittling away at its health as well. Exactly. Um, and yeah, we saw that Roxa was enough, but I don't know what else um, that Landorus will do here. Snorlax is back on the field. Um, Interesting to see if that Landorus might carry the move knockoff. That would be very important here. Or maybe firing off a Z move uh, that Landorus won't appreciate. No, exactly. Either. It certainly wouldn't. I mean, Cresselia's already eaten its berry on Aurelian's side, so can't knock anything off there. But I think the target here would be the Snorlax. You want to knock the berry off that before it can go for any kind of belly drum or any kind of recover. Um, I mean, with all the speed drops, uh, hopefully these players have been keeping track a little bit better than we have. But you never know, this could be something that would be advantageous in a trick room situation. Yep. Uh, that one's maybe, I mean, we saw high house power, so I don't expect Aurelian's Snorlax to carry the move Protect um, if he's also a setup variant. But we see the Helping Hand, and let's see if that is a Tectonic Rage or just a regular Earthquake. Uh, there's the Protect indeed, Yeah, wow. it is actually protecting Snorlax. The Snorlax has got many tricks up its sleeves. Landorus, however, goes for the U-turn that was Helping Hand boosted, going into the Cresselia, going to be super effective and enough to pick up the KO. So the Cresselia and Michele side really helping out Landorus to pick up the KO against his opponent there. And, and also Aurelian means doesn't look happy at all no, about that. No, he certainly doesn't. I don't think he was expecting um, Cresselia to be the target necessarily on this occasion. But it leaves Michele free to bring that Charizard back into the field. Bring the sun once again as the weather had died out a little bit. You know, I wish Charizard could turn up here in Sheffield. It's currently raining right now in June. Um, <laughs> but it's sunny on the screen for Michele right now. So Charizard back in, sets up the sun, and Salamence as the last Pokemon of Aurelian is now revealed. Um, so... I think Cresselia, once again, almost full health, has that moonlight in sun, uh, such a great spot, and as long as Charizard is taking care of that Snorlax, but of course that Salamence is outspeeding that. So the potential player is protect your Charizard instead of an icy wind to reduce the speed of that Salamence, and then uh, your Charizard can take care of that Snorlax. Another play would be prevent, um, like prevent Ice Wind Cup from hitting your Salamence by protecting it and then setting up Belly Drum. Let's see, he's going for that Mega Evolution. That isn't losing him anything, uh, anything even if he's protecting. Might as well just click that button and get that Mega Salamence onto the field here with the Aerial ability and go straight for a Dragon Dance. So the setup move coming out from the Salamence, boosting up its attack and its speed. So even if an Icy Wind comes out and connects, the speed will at least be at neutral. Um, going to be a Heat Wave coming out from the Charizard though as well. Going to do some good damage to Snorlax in the sun. Will be enough to proc the berry though. So now that item has been consumed. Unless Snorlax is going to click Recycle, it's going to be without its ber berry if it belly drums but instead it's going to be returned. So just going straight for damage, not going to waste turns by setting up, just cleanly picks up the KO here on that Charizard, leaving Cresselia to just go for an icy wind. Like we've seen it do so much this game. Going to be obviously super effective into that Salamence, but how much will it do? Oh, Takes wow. it down to just the red, it was a critical hit. I was going to say, Icy Wind usually doesn't do that much damage to that Salamence, but that critic explained that. Um, but I like the Dragon Dance play because you boost your attack and you don't lose any speed because the speed boost from Dragon Dance and the Icy Wind are, um, they just negate each other. Exactly. Um, I would have loved, I, I just think about if a potential um, like belly drum, if that is the variant he has, if that would be a good move here. Uh, but picking up the KO is great. And now my question is still, how is he dealing with that Cresselia? 
That's true, this Chris Elliott, we saw it in his previous game, it just sat on the field, barely took any damage in his previous stream game, and looking at it now, it's only taken about 46 damage here. Uh, it's really, really healthy, it's going to be firing out these icy winds for days, so unless he does get the belly drawn up and is able to sort of pick up a KO, this Chris Elliott is going to be here to stay. Exactly, and I was just talking about Salamence has the attack boost, of course the Landris, with its intimidated ability, it's lower the attack. That too. Yeah, so the Dragon Dance was totally... Well, I mean, it negated both uh, drops. So, I mean, in, in the end it might have turned, uh, like, paid off, but there's a Protect from Salamence, and let's see what Snorlax can do against both these Pokemon. Just goes for a Protect, so just going fully on the defensive here, and Mikele is going to be going for the Z-move, so here is the Tectonic Rage, going to be going into the Snorlax, so great Protect there from Aurelion. Um, it's not going to be dealing, obviously, as much damage because it's going to be into the Protect. But, you know, this angry little Anderus, you have to wonder, is it maybe packing something like Super Power afterwards to get the remaining damage off that it needs? I mean, another Helping Hand Earthquake might be enough. And since the berry uh, broke already and is consumed by that Snorlax, uh, he won't be able to... Oh, yeah, okay, wow. <laughs> it did barely anything. That Snorlax is such a tank. Uh, of course, Salomon's going to protect itself from any damage coming out from that Cresselia, though, as well. So I'm still interested in what the last move of Snorlax is. We saw Protect, we saw High Horsepower, and we turn. So there's the potential of either Belly Drum or just Recycle without any setup. But I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't like... I wouldn't would like to see... It? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't bank on non-setup Snorlax here. Um, so yeah, there's the Protect on Landris, preventing it to go down from any attacks from that Salamence. Salamence, so goes for Return straight into, into that Cresselia. Cresselia. So gonna start chipping away at this bulky Pokemon here. Gonna go for another Icy Wind though, however, and thanks to the critical hit that it got previously, Salamence will be KO'd here. And it's now gonna be Aurelian left with that Snorlax facing down Mikele's Landris and the Cresselia. If he has got something like Belly Drum, now would probably be the time to click it, but it's gonna be another Return. So doubling into this Cresselia, he just wants it off the field, but as you can see, Cresselia is going nowhere. Yeah, thanks for that Intimidate from Landris earlier. That Snorlax is not able to pick up the kill on that Cresselia. Uh, Aurelian not super happy about that, uh, but he still has two games to come back from that. So we see Earthquake here. I don't think that is enough yet. I mean, single target, it's going to do a little bit of extra damage. But I, I think, um, oh, of course it won't be. It's got the Cresselia there as well, floating up in the air. But, you know, even if you've gone for something like a helping hand, that could have definitely done the work. But Cresselia deciding to not help out Landorus. It's just going to help itself this turn and go for a Moonlight in the sun while it's still shining up in the air. Um, return, though, coming out, though, from that Snorlax. It's going to take Landorus down to 11 hit points, but it's around now to go for another Earthquake. Yeah, and now helping an Earthquake will just seal the game. And Mikaela wins game one of round seven here in Sheffield. Uh, and he's so close to top cutting this event. And we talked about it earlier. He's in a really good spot to fight for those day two spots at the World Championship. And now he's just proving that he's here um, at 6 1, winning game one of round seven. I mean, he's, he's making a point. He's going to be feeling very, very intense right now. And you can see from Aurelian as well, he was really focused in that game and he let a few things slip away from him. He wasn't happy with a few of the plays. And so he's going to need to be able to regroup. And both these Cresselias are going to be probably icy winding their way the whole way through the set. And it's just going to depend on whether the icy winds can take Michele to that top cup. Yeah, but I want to throw out how important that Moonlight was because, <laughs> uh, I mean, Incineroar's keep, keep going for that knockoff. Uh, dealing a lot of damage early when the berry was still on uh, Cresselia, but after that, Cresselia was just able to out heal the the sort knockoffs. Of sort of like he healed, like he was healing back more dam like health than knockoff was doing damage. So he was just staying on the field forever, and that <laughs> paid off in the end since it was just able to help with helping hands um, and just the staying part of Cresselia was amazing here in that game. Um, so we just talked about him. Cresselia before the game, and I'm still interested to see how really, and knowing the set, knowing Moonlight, knowing the Barry, how he's trying to take care of that Cresselia early in the game, so he can then focus on the other Pokemon. No, exactly, and we saw him get the um, knockoff off very early on in the game as well, though, getting rid of the Barry from the Cresselia, but that just wasn't enough. You would sort of think that a knockoff going into that Pokemon with the we type weakness as well, um, and obviously knocking off an item gets the boost as well, and the was such a powerful Pokemon, that it would have done a lot more, but unfortunately for Aurelian, that, that um, Cresselia is here to stay. But it'd be interesting to see whether Aurelian maybe sticks with that Snorlax again. We didn't see it go for any setup. It was just kind of the bulky Pokemon trying to get KOs. But thanks to the Intimidate on Mikele's side, he was able to sort of negate the damage coming out there. Yep, and we were talking about Gastrodon earlier, but we didn't see it in the first game. Um, and since Mikele won the first game, I think he's confident to not change up too many things. Stick with his Raichu, Charizard, Cresselia, Lanner's combination, which worked out quite well for him in that first game here. But yeah, we were about to go into game two. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a lot of pressure for both players. 
uh, at this um, regional stage here, they want to make sure they are back for tomorrow's top code. Oh, they certainly do. And it's now sort of one game away, potentially. It's up to Aurelian to maybe get this game, take it to a game three, or Michele to take the set and then the top cut spot. But let's have a little look at these leads. They're fighting out here in the final round of the Sheffield Regional Championships. It's going to be the Charizard and the Raichu. Once again for Michele, he's sticking with that lead. Whereas Aurelian has switched it up and has gone for Cresselia and Incineroar instead of Snorlax. Yep, so a few changes here, but yeah, that, Chris, uh, that Charizard and Raichu, once again, back. I think we saw that like every game, Michele was in stream, he leaded with Raichu and Charizard. He likes to lead, uh, and it looks like he has the right tools to play around that. He has Wall Switch to change up his position. But yeah, no switches in the first turn. Charizard goes straight for that Mega Evolution. We might see a fake out into that Incineroar and then just go for a Heat Wave to start chipping off damage. Yes, we'll have to see exactly what these players have gone for. It could sort of make or break a game at the beginning here with the pressure going into the set. Going to be the fake out though going into that Incineroar, the speedy little electric mouse there having the faster fake out of course as Heat Wave comes out in the sun. Going to wow. do a huge amount of damage like Cresselia with a critical hit and will of course chip away at that Incineroar but Trick Room has come out. So these icy winds probably aren't going to want to be fired off right now because he, you know, he wants to keep the speed speedy on his slow side if that makes yeah, sense. It looks like he changed up his strategy and goes to uh, Trick Room mode now instead of playing the Icy Wind uh, game from the last game. And I really like that position because now Incineroar is free to start. Like I think if Flab is easily taking out the Raichu from that spot, and then if he's doubling up into that slot with a Flab Blitz, Psy Shock, then whatever comes in will take a lot of damage. I can assume that um, neither Cresselia nor Landorus will be happy to take that. No, that's very true. And you know, if he even goes for a Heat Wave, he's not going to be able to pick up that Cresselia without another critical hit. Might maybe try and go for the Flamethrower just to try and get um, sort of that single target damage off. But Cresselia going for the helping hand. This time Aurelian's Cresselia is going to be helping out its buddy. And it will be a knockoff nice. coming out from that center into the Cresselia switching. This does a huge amount of damage. Not only knocks off the berry, but takes it down into the red with 26 hit points remaining. What a great play there by Aurelian. As the Flamethrower does come out from that uh, Charizard, but again, it still doesn't pick up the KO. It's just proking berries here. And we see how, cru <laughs> once again, I can just stress out how important that knockoff is against Cresselia. Now, Trick Room's up, and Cineroar, probably the slowest thing on the field here, considering that Michele's um, Cresselia has both uh, Moonlight and Icy Wind. He might be a little bit faster variant than this Incineroar. So Incineroar is free to keep going for attacks uh, and helping hand Flare Blitz. Nothing in this team wants to take that. And Cresselia already down to 26 HP. It was the MVP in the first game, but now he might be knocked out before it really starts. We'll have to find out. Helping hand this time coming out from uh, Michele's Cresselia. Going to help out Charizard go for a fire type attack most likely in this game. But knockoff from that Incineroar will get rid of Michele's um, Cresselia for him in this game. A Pokemon that gave him so much trouble. It's now gone from the field. Psyshot going to go into that Charizard. We saw previously it doesn't do too much, but that little bit of chip could be crucial in the end game as it goes for a Heat Wave. Once again, taking Cresselia right down into the red, but not enough to pick up the KO. Yeah, that Charizard really lucky to hit all his Heat Waves so far, but he missed a few earlier. <laughs> um, He's making up for it now. Exactly. Helping hand comes in handy. Even if you're like sure that you're going down that turn, you can just help your friend uh, before you're going down. So uh, great play there. Helping hand boosted Heat Wave, dealing a lot of damage, but Cresselia is still on the field, at least on Aurelian's side. Um, and yeah, Trick Room, take out his back. That is one interesting and point. And that could go into Cresselia there. Yep. Um, and considering that neither Incineroar nor Cresselia, Cresselia are known for carrying the move Protect, uh, Aurelian has to change things up a little bit, otherwise two Pokemon might go down here. Certainly, we're going to have to see what will go on in this game. Aurelian is under threat to lose his Cresselia. Michele could potentially just fake that slot out, or predictly it's going to switch out and maybe go for a more offensive attack into that slot. But Incineroar is going to have something to say about it as well. Flare, Blitz, boosted in this terrain, um, in this sun, could be quite strong. But instead, Fake Out's going to go into that Incineroar, choosing to not pick up the easy KO there on the Cresselia, and it will take a side shot for its troubles as Charizard goes for a Heat Wave, keeping itself accurate with these Heat Waves. We'll pick up the KO on Cresselia anyway and get a little bit more chip damage onto Incineroar. Yep, so in general we can assume that it is um, a Solvest variant looking at the damage that it like only took from all those uh, fire type attacks here. But now Trick Room is still up. Uh, that Snorlax, sorry, that Raichu is chipped already, <laughs> more than just chipped. But it looked like um, Aurelian brought himself in a really great spot where in Trick Room he can start sweeping. And I don't know if he knows that this Raichu is a Solvest variant. Um, but he can just freely attack into that slot. He cannot protect. 
and either Ratchet goes down or whatever comes in. If that is the Landorus, then it will take a lot of damage from the combination of Incineroar and Snorlax. So yeah, really in, um, really in a few great spots early in this game, and now once again, he, he is free to attack that slot. He certainly is, and that Landorus is going to come in here, although it will take some damage or fire off an Intimidate that could be crucial for him um, to sort of negate some of the damage that these two slow Pokemon can do in this Trick Room environment. Um, but of course, Snorlax, we, I don't believe we have seen the fourth and final move as of yet. Goes for a return, though, into the Charizard, does some good damage there, and Flare Blitz will be coming off from the Incineroar as well, going into the Landorus switch, and in the Sun, this does a huge amount of damage, though. Recoil, unfortunately, that's a side effect of having so much offensive power. It will be KOing itself in return as Charizard goes for a flamethrower in the sun into Snorlax. Does about a third of damage, which is quite good, but it has now lost the sun. Trick Room is over, though. Yeah, it really would look like a really good position. Now Trick Room is over uh, and Snorlax on the field. But Salamence joins the party, fighting off an Intimidate into that Landorus that will help Snorlax taking any incoming Tectonic Rage or Earthquakes. So Salamence is free to start setting up here. Uh, I don't think a return from that Snorlax will be enough to pick up the KO on that Charizard. Uh, but yeah, Salamence not fearing any icy winds from Cresselia anymore. Can fully really start setting up and then go for strong attacks while Snorlax slowly chipping down Michaela's Pokemon. Exactly, that Salamence can just start Dragon Dancing up. Charizard really can't do anything to it, particularly without the Sun. It's not even going to get that extra edge of offensive pressure. Landorus, however, can click the Rock Slide button. There's always that <laughs> option. You know, we've been kind of blessed in the Sheffield Regional so far. We haven't seen too many Rock Slide shenanigans going on, but the day is not over yet. It could still be Landorus' time to click that button and do what it does best. But hopefully I haven't just commentated cursed it, and we're going to see a lot of that. But we are going to see a switch coming out. Mikkeli's going to bring Raichu back onto the field straight away bringing out his Charizard to maybe reset the Sun for later, just so he can start dealing out a lot more damage, particularly against the Snorlax. Just wants to keep firing off those flamethrowers, as Salamence will Mega Evolve. So jumping into that form once again, as we've seen it do many times. Lander is, however, going straight for the Protect. Doesn't want to take any damage here, potentially from a return, uh, which is exactly what Salamence has gone for, maybe knowing that it wasn't going to go for the Dragon Dance straight away. Oh, no. And actually, it was the double into Landorus, but I love the switch from McKelly because oh, no. now he can just fake out and stop a Dragon Dance or a setup. Yeah, I was going to say, if Aurelian goes for that Dragon Dance, it would be such a great turn. Uh, but no, he doubles up into the Landorus and Michele, clever enough, reads into that, protects his Landorus and brings in his Raichu to have that fake out pressure going on. So, really great switch from Michele. I really like his play so far. Uh, not like, he is, he is here for a reason. He is 6 1 for a reason and he is ready to claim a 7 1 top cut spot. That he certainly is. Both these players here know what is at stake. This is where it really comes down to. Your first couple of rounds, you're just settling into the tournament. But we have been here for several, I mean, probably several, several hours here, like about eight hours. I've lost count. We've been here long before the players turned up. Um, and it's been a very long, intense day, very warm in here, lots of energy being used. So these players are coming down, they've just got to use the last bits of energy they have got to focus and get into this game. Michele bringing that sun once again, trying to wish Sheffield into some sunlight here. As Salamence goes for a return, still not going for the Dragon Dance play, just going to go into Charizard and pick up the KO as well. Wow. So okay, I think that that knockout was really crucial, but we see confirmation about the last move on Raichu. And it's, it's a it's nuzzle, nuzzle, one of the most adorable moves in the game. Going to paralyze that Salamence, meaning that it will be slow. Unfortunately, Raichu is going to have to take a high horsepower directly, um, and it will be Kyoto returning back to Mikele. But that nuzzle, if that Salamence now gets paralyzed, um, potentially Mikele still has a way to get into this game. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. You just mentioned Rockside, and now, thanks to... Uh, <laughs> Salamence being paralyzed <laughs> through that nozzle. That's Rock all side the is actually a play. Or like, I think a clever play would be trying to snipe that Snorlax away with a Tectonic Rage, hope for that paralysis on Salamence, and then start firing off Rock Slides. Well, Landorus goes for the Protect, potentially trying to burn a Protect on the Snorlax here. Um, but it, no Protects on Aurelian's side, it's going to be the return from the Salamence, and Snorlax going for a return as well, but thanks to Protect, no damage being done here. But what do you think it's going to come down to now in these last couple of turns? Yeah, I was just talking about it. So I think after those Intimidate, Snorlax won't be able to take Landorus down with a return. Um, but on the other side, yeah, that's exactly what I was <laughs> waiting for. So that's this Tectonic Rage. It is surely going into that Snorlax. Should pick up the KO here. Um, and after that, it all comes down. Is that Salamence paralyzed or not? Uh, and we see how Aurelian knows exactly what's going on. And he knows exactly what it comes He's down to. He's praying right now. So that's Tectonic Rage going to that Snorlax. Um, known for being a really bulky, really high um, health 
HP stat Pokemon, but, but it, it goes does down. get KO'd. Yeah. Now, is the Salamence going to move or is it going to be paralyzed? It does move. It goes for the return. Going to go straight into this Landorus and it will pick up the KO. I mean, Aurelian has taken game two. We're going to have a game three in the Hypers last round. If, if there is a time to have a game three, it's now. Yeah, like Aurelian was really relieved after that. Uh, Salamence attacks came off. Uh, but yeah, well deserved win in that second game here. I'm looking forward to see the last, last game of today. Third game three, round eight, Sheffield Region 2018, last European regional, <laughs> uh, last European battle for all players before uh, North American Internationals and the World Championship later this summer. But yeah, for now, this game decides who's secured his spot in Top Gun. It certainly does. And you can see the players wasting no time. They're jumping straight into this game three. They're focused, they're ready. I wonder if they're going to change things up here, though. Do you think they're going to stick with the same strategies that won them either game? I mean, it was close in both sets. Uh, yeah, like, uh, we still haven't seen any setup move on that Snorlax. But looking at what happened in that second game, I don't think he, he will go for that setup strategy in the third game. Uh, but just firing off attacks paid really off because um, Snorlax is naturally bulky, taking a lot of hits and then slowly chipping down your opponent. Um, on the other side, Joppy. Joppy. <laughs> <laughs> Michele. Um, I think his picks, they were fine. It all came down to that Trick Room setup. I think that surprised Michele early. And then helping a knock up into a light slot, catching that switch in from Cresselia uh, was really great. That did um, so much damage. I'm pretty sure Michele won't let that happen a second <laughs> time because this Cresselia was his M MVP in the second game. Uh, in the first game. It certainly was. The Cresselli has kind of carried him through to this position here in round eight. And it's going to come down, I think, to which Cresselia is going to be able to stand by their trainer more and win it for them here in this final set of the day. Both these trainers are ready. You can see that Aurelian is really focused here, just staring down his Diaz. And it's going to be once again for Michele, that Charizard and Raichu. He is sticking with what he knows. He believes in it. As Aurelian goes for Incineroar and Cresselia. Yeah, so now we saw what happened in the last game. And Michele, knowing that, he won't let that easily happen to set him, like, let him set up Trick Room once again. He might go for early knockoff play um, into either Cresselia or Incineroar, but um, I don't think this will just be a fake out into Incineroar and a Heat Wave again and then easily Trick Room going up again. So Michele has to come up with a new way to deal with that Trick Room option. He certainly does. If, uh, if he allows Aurelian to get this set up, then he's able to be in a position where he can start doing a lot of damage with things like that, helping how a knockoff helping hand knock off that we saw. And as well, maybe now in the sun, he can start dealing off more damage with the Flare Blitz. So if you're Michele, you want to be able to stop that from going up. And something like a Fake Out from that Raichu could technically be the way. Fake Out is going to be coming out straight away, but instead going into that Incineroar, um, going to be stopping it from going for any moves of its own. A Fake Out potentially as Heat Wave comes out. But once again, Griselia did avoid it. Is it going for Trick Room? Yes, it is. So Aurelian has got this situation up where he's in Trick Room. His Cresselia was so great and dodged out the way. It's doing things for him right now. Yeah, he looked like a little bit sorry when that Heat Wave <laughs> missed his Cresselia. But of course, you uh, take them here. he takes that. Um, but now, I was just talking about that, how Michele should not easily let that Trick Room come up. Maybe, though, he has Gastron in the back this time uh, to take care of Incineroar in Trick Room. But I'm not super happy about that easy, like that Trick Room going up so easily here. Um, let's see what is happening here. Even if Gastron is coming in for right here, helping a knockoff, you won't appreciate that either. No, of course, and even if you bring Gastrodon in, you've set up the sun on your side of the field. It, if you want to be firing off Skulls into that Incineroar, you don't want the sun being up there gating the damage that you can deal out. Yeah, that is one point. I, I can also see Raichu switching off for uh, Landorus, firing off Intimidate, uh, and Landorus won't care about any knockoffs. So that is not what's happening. Gastron joining the party. Gastron, the little sea slug has joined the party as Incineroar goes for a knockoff. No helping hand assistance here. Maybe just an icy wind to cover if the um, Landorus came in, but instead going to be the side shot going into that Gastrodon. Poor little Gastron's only just joined the field and it's already below 50% HP. As Charizard goes for a heat wave, this time getting his accuracy back on track and it will be doing some good damage to both these Pokemon. Mikele, he's really surprising me as a player. Uh, he always brings the right pick for that tournament. I remember back in uh, Stuttgart, yes. he played um, God of War when like, only a few players were bringing that Pokemon and he had great success with that. Now, uh, here in Sheffield, he opted for Charizard and huh, it's paying off. He's 6-1, so great. Like, I want to give shoutouts to Michele at this point here. But yeah, going back to that game, Gastelon now on the field. Uh, like, I mean, that Incineroar, I think we from all the damage he took earlier. We can assume that it's carrying the uh, item Assault West. 
So we'll easily take an Earth Power, but then how is Gastron going down? Because it can also just recover. That's very true. It has sort of health regeneration of its own. Both Gastron and the Cresselia from Michele love doing this to their opponents, just sitting on the field and taunting them that they cannot be KO'd. Gastron has clicked that recover button. Knockoff's going to come out once again, though, but as we did have the item knocked off previously, not going to be dealing as much damage. And Psyshock once again going to come into Gastron and start tackling its defenses. Charizard goes for the Heat Wave, though. Once again, it's accurate. I, I'm a little bit worried about this Charizard. It can be a little bit flaky. And it gets the burn on Cresselia. We saw the burn Cresselia in game one that Michele was was victorious in. Could this be a sign for things to come? Yeah, it doesn't look like Aurelian's too happy about that turn. In the end, um, that recover, just like all the moves from Aurelian didn't have any effect because thanks to that recover, he's almost back to the same health. Um, so two moves going into the void basically and Charizard just firing off in a uh, heatwave for free. So Charizard on the field from turn one on <laughs> just ignores the trick room, <laughs> just goes for the heat waves. Hitting quite a few of them, getting the burn now. I think another heat wave might be enough. Maybe a flame flower is the better call here. Yes. With Cresselia in danger to be taken out. I mean, this Charizard as well, it's got full HP at the moment. Aurelian hasn't been able oh, to wow. touch it. But Amoongus bravely jumping into the fray here. If he's gone for another heat wave with that Charizard, this poor, poor Amoongus is going to leave the field as quickly as it joined. Risky plays from Aurelian, double switch. Amoongus and um, Snorlax are on the field. Gastrodon once again just going to go for the recover, potentially predicting that moves were coming into it. But as it's not, this is a free recover as Charizard goes for a flamethrower going into that Snorlax though. So going to deal some good damage to it still. But that Amoongus got away lucky there. Wow, yeah. I want to give a shout out to Ren for that play. Amazing. I was talking about how uh, Flame Floor uh, might be the right call here. Going into that um, Cresselia, picking up the KO, and Aurelian reading into that, sw double switching, bringing Amoongus against like, <laughs> a Charizard. That was really brave from him. Very Giving, brave. Yeah, shout out to that. R paid off. Trick Room is still up. Amoongus on the field. So Aurelian can start like uh, threatening down. Uh, Michele's Pokemon. Maybe we see a setup this time. <laughs> so I can see a spore going into Charizard and then yeah, just maybe a belly sleep. drum or a curse finally. I want to see what the fourth move is on this Snorlax. I don't even have it revealed yet and it's very recent. I want to know what it is. But Amoongus is going to leave the field and Incineroar jumping right back in, firing off an Intimidate. Not going to matter too much, but it is back on the field in the sun, which is exactly where it does like to be. Um, and obviously we'll have the fake out pressure going into the next turn. But belly drum, Snorlax heard my heard what I was asking, and we get to see that it is the belly drum variant. And I think it's very, very interesting that Aurelian has left it until so deep into this game three to reveal that. Yeah, uh, and he doesn't look very happy because that um, Gasseron going for Earth Power. Going and into I think that Snorlax. It just doubles up into that Snorlax. Heat wave coming off though, that won't be enough to take uh, out the Snorlax here. Oh, and unfortunately Snorlax is not as nimble as its partner Cresselia and won't be able to dodge out of the way of it. But the problem now is Trick Room is over. Incineroar can only fake out one of these Pokemon. So if Gastrodon or Charizard go for a single type attack into that Snorlax, it's going to KO it. I think there was kind of like over predict here. Um, just going for that Spore play into Charizard and then setting up might have been a safer play. Now Sun is over, Cresselia comes back in, but uh, the boosted as Snorlax won't appreciate any attack. So there's a Flamethrower going into that Snorlax, picking up the KO. Aurelian already took off his headphones. We he's saw not a handshake. Yep, he's not happy about this game. No, I feel like he he felt disappointed with the plays that he made there previously. Maybe he didn't want to go for the for the belly drum option so much, but I think he just shouldn't have switched out that Amoongus. It was in such exactly. a great position to maybe exactly. even Rage Powder um, or go for a Spore, and maybe he just panicked in the moment or had a strategy in his I head think, that didn't check out. I think out. he expected a Charizard to protect him. He was like, okay, you can easily go for your protect. I will set up, and then afterwards I have my fake out and, and my it boosted uh, Snorlax. But unfortunately, it didn't work out, and he's down to Cresselia and Amoongus, and they don't have too much offensive pressure. So he just forfeits that game. Still a very great game. Give it up for both players. But uh, Michele's in top cup. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations to Michele. Amazing performance. Coming back to Sheffield here to top cut the regionals. And we'll feature, like, we featured him twice today. But he will be back tomorrow for another quite intense top cut. He certainly will be. He top cut Stuttgart. He's going to top cut Sheffield. So huge congratulations to him. And to Aurelian as well. He played that so, so well. Just unfortunately that one turn made and broke the set for him. And it's something that, you know, he still is going to be an X2. He still could cut. We could yep. see him tomorrow. But I think this experience is something he will definitely be able to look back on, particularly with this team. And know that sometimes these decisions are something you can build on and maybe try and not get in his head so much. But he still played such a fantastic yeah, game. I mean, it was we lovely have to, to showcase We have to him. keep in mind how much was online here. Because so much. 
we, they just played about a top cut spot. Uh, and yes, maybe you would have played differently if there wasn't so much online. Unfortunately, it didn't pay off for Aurelian. But as we said, congratulations to amazing performance from Michele. Um, we will talk to him tomorrow in Top Cut because then we will be able to feature him. Yes, unfortunately, um, we're unable to have an interview with him as um, he is under 18. We haven't got a signature. So unfortunately, no fortune cookie coming out for Michele. <laughs> but I do still have one for you, my co-caster, who's gone the whole day without opening. An elusive fortune cookie. <laughs> There's a fortune cookie. It's All what right. the crowd wants. Um, <laughs> just for you at home, we will uh, have a short break. We will see if Aurelian is ready for an interview. We might talk to him this time. And then we will show you the top eight players. Yes. We'll have a little recap once it's been announced. Exactly. Uh, before we say goodbye for today and talk to you tomorrow again. But Stop uh, stalling and now open your cookie. <laughs> Let's have a little look. See what the fortune is for you. So... Fortune is often searched for like, a, like hat a hat worn on the hat. Well, in a way, that's kind of fitting for you casting tomorrow because you're going to be wearing a headset. So that's your role tomorrow. You're not competing like you used to do. Yep. You're now here on the casting desk, so that could be what it is. Or maybe it's about our players tomorrow. Whichever one is going to be the most focused is going to be the one to take the title. You'll have to find out by joining us tomorrow. But don't go anywhere yet. We're going to see if Aurelian would maybe like an interview just to talk things through, maybe after we found out if he's got into that X2 position. But regardless, once Top Cut has been announced, we will be back here to break it down for you a little bit and tell you more about the stream schedule going on tomorrow. Because until Top 8 is confirmed, we don't know what we're doing in terms of how many games we can bring you. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back soon. <laughs>